Hey, hey, it's CDA and welcome back to Ixion. And this game is amazing so far and I really like it and I hope you do too. Last time around we put ourselves in orbit of the moon. We built this nice little starting facility which is nice and organized. And well, we are pretty much ready to leave our solar system. So let's go and do that. There's a little cinematic coming up. If you don't like that, make sure you skip ahead. But it's definitely worth watching, I believe. It is charging up. All the ships are returning, but they are already returned because I knew that was going to happen. So uh, let's get on with the movie. One small snap for men. Earth, our home, she is unique. Held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution. Beyond raw survival, beyond the safety of comfort, we, humanity, pursue something greater. We have learnt, persevered, shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of science. However, Humanity has brought destruction to the earth, polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste of a dying world. But the earth is not to be our grave. A mother does not wish to see her children disappear with her. She wishes to see instead courage in her children to carry on. Dolos carries this courage. We have gone further than any nation, moved faster than any corporation, hand in hand with those who, like us, carry that courage. The Tycoon Station is both an epilogue of these endeavors and a prologue to humanity's next steps. Our Council of Scientists leads the vanguard. They know, as do we all, that the survival of humanity now depends on what we glimpse out there dark that we are masters of our own destiny that we must go as a species bound together pushing further into the unknown we set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found horizons to explore and because our very existence depends on it i give you the stars i give you the full engine Well then. Full jump complete. Running preliminary diagnostics. Several anomalies detected. Multiple digital security breaches found within full jump routines. Full engine critically damaged. 
All integrity compromised. Analysis confirms discrepancies between the mission clock and the apparent advanced state of the solar system. We are receiving no communication signals from Earth. Likelihood of ongoing survival stands at approximately 7.67%. Activating Marduk Survival Protocols. New mission objective established. Ensure humanity's survival by finding a habitable exoplanet. Urgent issues requiring immediate attention. Increase food production output. Restore hull integrity. Well, I like a clear to-do list, so fix the food, fix the hull, find a planet to live on. Um, yeah, so this is the actual real start of the game, but the tutorial is very helpful to really get you to, well, know the systems and know how everything works. Luckily, I planned ahead a little bit, so we have the food covered, but let's see what events we have popping up. First one over here. You may have noticed that the moon has broken apart. The crew are aware of this and many rumors are spreading throughout the station. You will have to make an official statement. Dodos has many enemies. Uh, something must have happened during the test jump. Being such a high profile event was a perfect opportunity for them to strike and sabotage our plans. And we did just learn that there were some anomalies in our subroutine. So could be. It's our fault. A system failure at the exact moment of the jump caused the engine to drag a part of the moon with it into self-similar space. Our mission is now to rebuild. Mm, taking the blame ourselves, maybe not. Although, technically, I think we did see that we kind of blew up the moon. Evidence suggests a great deal of time have passed in the solar system. The moon's destruction is obviously a consequence of humanity's selfish and warlike instincts. So we blame someone else, we blame ourselves, or we blame everyone. Um, not entirely sure if it matters, but let's blame everyone. Mm -hmm. So we get a hit of trust with minus 5%. But honestly, that is not that bad because we are currently gaining 2 per cycle. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, we do have this other event as well over here. The crew are asking a lot of questions about the state of Earth. When she behavioral algorithms to predict a decrease in productivity of 22% if those are unanswered. As administrator of the Tycon station, Tycon, it's Tycon, right? He pronounced it Tycon. Anyway, uh, you should find some answers quickly. Let's send a mission to Earth. That sounds like a pretty good idea anyway. Um, yeah, we didn't get any new buildings, so we actually did already solve the food situation. Planning ahead a little bit there. Um, we do have a small amount of building materials left. So what I actually want to do... No, not building a new workshop. What I want to do is build another stockpile. Because we did get some of these electronics. So now we actually have some place to put them. And it's nicely aligned with everything that we already have going on. Let's see what else we have going on. We still have the Urshanabi out here. Although, um, let's see. Uh, we can go explore that. But I think we'll go visit Earth first. All the other planets seem to have um, disappeared somehow. Interesting, but yeah, let's see what's happening over at Earth. All right, so what can we do here? No signals have been received from Earth. The ocean seems to have evaporated and the surface temperature has risen significantly since the Tycoon was last in orbit. Atmospheric readings indicate the presence of strong dust storms and dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide, radiation and microplastics. The blue planet will never again deserve its name. Well, that doesn't look good. Um, we can investigate Dolos headquarters or our own home, interesting, or we can scour the globe in search of survivors. Well, if there's any survivors out there, they've made it this long, they can wait a few more days. So let's find our headquarters first. In the meanwhile, I'm setting a probe to auto build as well, so we can see if we can find anything else out there, because I have a feeling we might see some more events popping up now. So let's see what's left of our headquarters. The converted oil rig, which Dolos used as its state-of-the-art headquarters. Really? And the converted oil rig? Anyway, um, is gone. Only a few scraps of metal remain and they are scattered across an expanse of dusty cracked earth. There is no sign of survivors. 
we do get a fair bit of science, so that's nice. We can complete the research on the batteries that we were doing. And we actually get quite a bit of alloy, so that is convenient as well. Um, oh, we can actually do the other things as well. So let's find our family home next because it's the shortest one and then we can find for some survivors, hopefully. We built a probe and we actually had a quest to do so and let's find an asteroid with iron deposits. Um, large probe. Mm, interesting, there's some event over here as well, but that's not iron, that's not the quest. Uh, interesting. There seems to be... Oh, oh, that seems nice. Let's go with this one. Well, sadly, there's nothing left of our home, but we do get quite a bit of resources. So now let's see if there's anyone left on Earth. Okay, this is pretty nice. We didn't find an event, but we did find an asteroid that has a little bit of carbon in it. And we also found an asteroid that has quite a lot of iron in it. Uh, we actually have another probe ready to go already, so let's see if we can find something. There is there is an event somewhere around here. Well, there's there's definitely something or something, someone or something around here as well. Can we combine these two? Maybe, maybe. Hmm, almost, almost, almost. I want the event. Let's go with that one. In order to make use out of those um, asteroids, we are also going to need a mining ship. Do we have the materials for that? Yes, we do. So let's go and build one. And then in the fleet overview, we're going to have to set it to mine everything. But we can't do that until it's actually ready. Okay, so this is interesting. We just found Venus again. That's what our probe found. So apparently we lost an entire planet. Now we have another probe. Let's see if we maybe can find some more planets. Uh, oh, there's something over here. Could it be Mercury or something? I don't know. Let's find out. In the meanwhile, we have our first mining ship. Uh, let's see. Let's set that to collect some iron. And then with lower priority duty... Uh, what else is carbon and that way well actually we can set everything else to low priority just so it's always doing something but initially we want as much alloy as we can get because we need it for pretty much everything speaking of alloy it seems we found something we have found nothing but rubble well we found something but um, we've seen no signs of life not even a corpse the lunaclism seems to have caused a series of events that precipitated the collapse of a thermo-industrial civilization the Earth has become a toxic and arid wasteland, scoured by harsh winds, now more inhospitable than Mars. Well, that's not good. The only remnant of civilization we found was a fallen stilly, which the, where the city of Washington once stood. Stuck in the crevasse, it has been sheltered from the wind. A praying, imploring divine forgiveness was engraved in gold on its surface. Uh, we get a ton of this polymer, so that's really nice because we were almost out. And we get some more science. So, all in all, pretty good. I'm going to leave the science ship to collect all of this science for a moment and get back to our actual science production, which is not there. It's over here. Uh, let's check out the technology tree. We're about to finish the battery. And, and then I think we'll want to start working on the steel mill, the polymer refinery, and the electronics factory so that we can basically make everything ourselves. Uh, well, maybe actually just the polymer and steel first and then maybe the cryonic center because we also need more people and this is supposed to kind of thaw out more people for us whenever we find them. However, we do have a couple of events, so let's check out what this is. To safeguard humanity, we must sign survivors and increase the station's population. We do not have time to go through the classic reproductive cycle of your species. What, nine months takes too long? But... Adding new members to the Tycoon's crew will have a positive impact on morale. Cryonic stasis, a practice pioneered by Dolos, was in growing use even before we left the solar system. There is a very high likelihood that cryonic pods containing survivors await discovery. Find and collect 500 cryonic pods. That is a lot. Okay. Uh, what is the other event? Let's check that out. Administrator, mission reports from the expedition to Earth are being discussed among the crew. The thought of having lost all loved ones left behind has destroyed morale for many of them. The symptoms of this trauma have now been collated under the medical designation Dead Earth Sickness. Stability penalty, minus one. Ouch. Okay, but I guess that makes sense. 
Okie dokie, but if we are going to have 500 more people coming in and we also need to start mass producing things like steel, I think we're going to need another um, sector. Now we can unlock either one of these. They cost the same as far as I know. Um, this is sector 6. This is sector 2. Let's just stick with the natural order and override the lock. So this is going to take us some alloy, some electronics, which you have plenty of, and some basic materials to get our population started. So let's override the locks. Now there is one thing worth mentioning is that the hull is currently slowly depleting or maybe not even that slow at all. We can repair it, um, but that actually also kind of costs alloy. So I want to make sure we have alloy production before we actually turn this on and start um, well, spending it before we actually have some. We completed the construction or the research at least of the batteries so let's move on with the steel mill i definitely want to get all of this up and running before i bother with everything else because right now things like stability don't seem to be an issue so uh, one thing at a time so the last few resources are arriving and that should now open sector two there we go let's wait for the announcement that we're probably going to get from the voice no nothing okay then we can pause it and let's think about how we're going to design the design this thing uh we actually have a lot of resources here on the floor so that's convenient um first things first though we are going to need a workshop we actually get one for free so that is convenient and uh, let's just place it over here in the corner and let's just work our way outward from there um i kind of want to place the stockpile in the corner as well Actually, um, can we dismantle this? Yes, we can. Hopefully we will still get one for free. Yes, we do, because that way we can start working from the bottom and make sure we do it in that way. Uh, we do need a tiny little road to connect this up. There we go. We might as well connect these up as well so we have something to collect. And then we can unpause and start working on that. Now, I want this to be my industrial sector. So all the production of factories and things like that is going to happen in here. And we're probably also going to need a secondary dock. Because right now we can only handle three ships. And I have a feeling with all that mining that we need to do, we're going to need more than that. Now, with that up and running, we can't actually build anything else except for the food. Because, of course, our people want to get fed and it's actually a nice way how the game protects you from forgetting that i suppose um are we going to build it right here um yeah i can't think of a reason not to other than the fact that this is a giant building and it kind of gets in the way a lot um if we build like this how much space do we have left does that really matter i'm not entirely sure is the answer However, um, let's not overthink this and just put it over here in the corner. It's nice and convenient. Um, and at least it's compact. So we can unpause and we have a little bit of road here. Now, if you're wondering how we're actually going to get the um, ingredients for this to get here, we, like food, then we need to go to this menu over here. We have the resource management. Basically, any resource that you have access to in the uh, particular sector, you can set based on a certain uh, either advanced or simple settings. So, for example, let's take alloy so we can actually build stuff. Um, you can see how much we have in terms of the actual amount we have in storage as well as the maximum storage space. And we can set this slider to determine how much we actually want in that sector. And basically everything that will get uh, over this threshold is eligible to be transported elsewhere now in this case i think it's fine if we leave this to let's say 25 and then we can set this to a minimum of 25 as well now this is just an arbitrary amount but this will make sure that we have always some resources in, in both of these sectors which is nice and all, of course, but we do need to make sure people can actually eat and there's actually food in the system as well. So for that reason, we are going to need another stockpile and this one is going to be set to food. Oh, it's automatically set to food and this will supply that. And that also means that we once again need to go to resource management and make sure that we set this to something like 25. It isn't actually registering the 
stockpile yet. There we go. We need it to unpause there for a moment. Uh, this way we'll always have at least some food in every sector. Assuming, of course, that we have enough food, but we do. Um, this should mean that we have food going to, from one sector to the other. In the advanced settings, you can actually set it a little bit more in more detail. So you can set it to export to certain sectors only in case you want to kind of uh, funnel it from one sector to the other. For now, I don't think we need that because we only have two sectors anyway. We'll also need to make sure we can house these people. So I think a simple row of three of these crew quarters will do for now. It's a little hard to see where you place them actually if you don't turn around the view. Luckily, you can do just that. Now we're also building a bit of a road system here. We are also getting some warnings. I think that we need an infirmary. So let's make sure that's not the correct button. Let's make sure we get that up as well. Um, we can actually stick that in here and then have a little bit of a road like that. Now let's see what our probe found. Okay, so we have some more asteroids over here. We can send out a new probe as well. Uh, there is something here-ish. There we go. Let's send you over there. And the spaceship can go where? Uh, I think we have, yeah, we have an actual a quest to go here. So let's just do that. And we can go to Venus, the debris field. Plenty of stuff to do. Very exciting. Oh, look, the people are, I don't know. Are they happy about the fact that we unlocked a new sector? They are, and they should be because it's awesome. 10% trust is not really going to matter, but it's a nice little detail. We're still in the progress of actually researching the steel mill, so in the meanwhile, let's do some events. And we reached our old little pal, the Urshanabi, which was earlier supplying us with food. Let's see what we can find out. Our sensors have detected the Urshanabi. The ship is broken in two and is not transmitting any signals. The phrase, whoever helps Dolos is an enemy of humanity, has been doubted. Uh, in a, a dot, dot, in large letters on the wreck of the Urshanabi. Mummified bodies have been attached to its hull. Mummified bodies, really? Okay then, uh, gather the remaining resources, I suppose. And apparently there is a lot of food in there, makes sense. I hope the expiration date hasn't passed, everything is ready for extraction. So that's a lot of free food, which we currently don't really need, but hey, I guess it's a nice little bonus. That also means that we can send our science ship somewhere else, and I guess we will go to the debris field. I'm hoping we get some more building materials in there, just to make sure we don't run out. Now with the steel mill unlocked, let's see if we can fit that in an uh, intelligent way over here. Um, so let's see, we probably want a few more of these stockpiles. So if we put one over here, we put one over here, then there's going to be a road leading up there. So if I measured that out correctly and I built a factory, this thing is huge, by the way. Um, if we put it over here, then we should have both access to the factory as well as enough room for two more stockpiles. And we can have this road leading up here and have a nice little cluster there. Um, speaking of those, that was not what I wanted to click. I keep clicking this. Sorry about that. Workshop, no. Stockpile, yes. So let's put one more over here and yeah, just, just the one for now. And then this is going to have, actually, no, let's move this a little bit. Might it'll be efficient while we're at it. And this stockpile is going to be right next to here. And this is going to be carrying what? Iron. So that the iron can be stockpiled here. It can be put right into the steel mill and then the steel mill can export it right over there into the alloy. Administrator, the integrity of the hull fell below 75%. Current damage exceeds the tolerance levels. Okay. Um, pledge to restore the hull to 75% within 30 cycles. I think we can do that considering we literally are about to turn this on. I think we can actually do it now So because we are about to start producing some alloy. So shouldn't be too big of an issue to turn this on. That's not what I wanted to press. So let's go back. Uh, where is the start repair button? Um, that's this one. There we go. Now it's enabled. And then hopefully we should see, yes, we are now starting to repair the hull with 11 per cycle. So that's a nice little rate. 
Meanwhile, we arrived at the debris field and let's see what happened over there. We have verified the data several times and can confirm the existence of a vast debris field covering an area of several thousand kilometers. The center of the field is a colossal artificial structure, which even in its ruined state makes the Tycoon look like an insect. So apparently they were trying to build themselves an artificial world, I'm guessing. No signals have been detected. We have identified three areas for investigation. The core of the structure, a secondary structure that looks to be the remains of a destroyed loading dock, and a particularly dense area of the debris field close to the other two sites. We recommend the utmost caution. Okay, that's interesting. So let's just go down the list. I'm guessing we can do all of that since, since it's not going to go anywhere. So let's start with figuring out what the hell they were doing over there. Now, I don't think just having the steel mill over here is going to cut it. So I'm actually also going to build a docking bay over here. So it allows us to have some more ships. And I think it, fitting it into this corner over here is going to be quite nice. It's a little bit central because I think we're going to have a lot more industrial type of things happening here. So that should be very nice. And that allows us to have three more ships. So we can maybe add another miner as well as another cargo ship. And then the third slot we'll have to see what we use it for. With all that construction going on, we should probably look a little bit closer at our uh, at our solar panel situation because we are running close on getting out of power again. So, um, I actually expected this to be more expensive, but this is again 40 power for 15 polymers. And, oh, this will pause. Well, okay, that's that's fine. I mean, we, we need the power anyway, so let's just build both of them. And then continue with the repairs after we are done with that. But that should give us another 80 power. That should hopefully be more than enough to actually stock up on some rare, or some raw resources. And get them transformed from iron into polymer and from carbon into polymers. So I'm really happy there is a pause button on this game. Because there's a lot of things happening at the same time. First of all, we are currently overworking our people. Because we built so much here and we only had 40 people. So now we don't actually have enough. So let's go to the population management. And let's check this out. In sector 1, we have 158 workers. While we only need 131. So that leaves 27. So what we could do is we could... Um, I have 20. Can I edit this number? Yes, I can. 27 from sector 1 to sector 2. And start migration. Now we're going to need some more housing for those people as well. But them having no house actually isn't a huge problem. At least not an instant problem. Um, so two houses over there. That fixes that problem. Or at least it will fix that problem soon enough. And, and then there's a second thing going on before I unpause, which is the event that we found something in the debris field. Versed visuals reveal a huge damaged structure surrounded by arches that have detached from their central axis. These arches show extreme signs of deterioration. The structure is covered in traces of explosive residue, collision impacts and scarring from unknown weaponry. Okay, so fight is going on. After exploring the few areas of the structure that remain accessible, the team of the Maximal spotted a number of salvageable resources near a ruined assembly area. Further analysis is possible, will, but will take some time. Okay, so this is interesting. We found 25 stasis units and some science as well. Now, can we? Yes, we can basically look at everything else. Um, let's just do the fastest things first so we can get whatever resource we get from that rolling and check out the loading dock. Well, that's not good. We have a steel mill that just got operational and it immediately had an explosion happening. So five crew members were injured, one crew member were killed. Uh, luckily we have the infirmary there, so that's not a problem, but let's check out the event. An accident has occurred. Indicated poor working conditions and power overloads can cause accidents. It should also be taken into consideration that larger buildings are more likely to have serious accidents. Well, that explains why it happened there. Um, Pledge to repair the steam mill within 10 cycles and keep it running optimally for 2 cycles. Yep, that sounds good because we need that thing. And how do we actually repair it? We repair it just by giving the order and that seems very straightforward. Now, um, I am actually currently building something, so let's make sure we remove the high priority from these residences. As soon as this is finished, hopefully it should go over here and then repair it. There it goes. 
and yeah it is currently uh, basically fixing the building and then hopefully it should be operational quite soon well, around our loading dock, there wasn't too much of interest. The frozen human remains constitute the majority of the debris that surround the loading dock. Evidence suggests that the area experienced depressurization after a structural breach. The dock itself has been looted and partially dismantled. Several cairns have been left behind, arranged in hel helical shapes and erected using makeshift materials. The team did find a few resources and have the these have been prepared for extraction. Nothing too much, but at least we have enough science now to actually research the cryostasis chamber so we can start employing some people and have more workers. So hopefully we'll have less accidents as well. Well, it didn't take too long to repair the steel mill and now we have the dock up and running. What we can actually do is we can go to this dock and, and then unassign the cargo ship from here and then go to this dock and then assign the cargo ship here and then hopefully this should mean that the cargo ship will now start ferrying the iron to here and then into this little storage unit and then from the storage unit we can start putting it into the steel mill finally we have the cryogenics center and now let's see uh where is it this one and it's not that big so that's nice i think we can fit it nicely in this corner over here there we go and this will need to get constructed and then we can st finally start falling out some people we'll need to build a few more residences here and there maybe but at least we can solve this overwork issue in sector two and we have a lot more buildings on the way so we are going to need all the manpower we can get now the second ship we just built is the Talaria and I'm actually going to set it to just collect raw resources that way we are sure we always have a steady inflow of well iron at least and that means we should have a steady inflow of alloys as well. And with the second mining ship, let's make sure this is prioritizing something else over whatever else we have in the system. And that way we should always have a steady flow of carbon coming in as well. Meanwhile, back at the assembly area, we found that it was evacuated prior to its destruction. Finding uniforms and equipment bearing the insignia of different organizations, it appears this facility was the property of the UN. Strangely, a number of embalmed bodies were found in a secluded area. The team was unable to determine the cause or outcome of the conflict, but they have managed to recover further resources. These have been packaged for extraction. So whatever went on here, apparently there's some sort of fight and I'm Kind of makes me worried that we're going to see some enemies appearing at some point. But hmm, who knows, for now, we have all the people we need to unfall. So um, we can pretty much double up on our entire population. So that's really exciting. Speaking of unthawing people, we have the cryogenics center up and running now. And you can select where you want people to go. So we have workers and non-workers. So this is basically um, reloaders over here. Um, I think we will set the non-workers over here. We will probably make this kind of our residential area. And then the workers are going to go to where they're sorely needed. And that is in sector 2. With all those new people coming in. We actually are going to need some more food. And let's just build that over here. And we are also going to need some more housing. Especially in this area. Because we did move people out of there. So we have some room over there. Um... So let's see, uh, there we go, let's put a few people there, and, and that should allow us to store an additional 30 people. It's not going to be anywhere near enough, because we are, ha well, we have 130 more people incoming, but for now that should do, I think. And with that all queued up, we have this second sector kind of self-sufficient now. We have enough food coming in, we have new people coming in, we have alloys coming in, we're mining stuff, we have cargo ships. And on top of that, actually, we have discovered quite a few things. I'm not uh, showing you every single probe I show out, but basically what we've done is we rediscovered some of our planets. And there's something of interest on each of those. But more interesting is that we actually discovered that space station that we were illegally communicating with before from the first episode so this is actually one of our main events we need to um, connect with them and apparently we've been told they have all the technology and all the resources to help us out i wonder if that's actually the case but i guess we will find out in the next episode for now i hope you enjoyed this one if you have any tips and tricks for me let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this game also let me know in the comments because comments help out the channel and of course so do likes and subscribing so make sure you do that if you haven't done so already 
for now, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to catch you in the next one.